Hi guys, Henning and Morten here from Flip Normals. And this video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be just a pure discussion on topology. This was a comment that we saw on one of our videos earlier. Mm. Someone had a question. It was a very good question, actually. When when do you want to use something that is C remeshed versus manual topology for you know for something in production? What is the better choice? So this is purely going to be a discussion of when to use what and, and our opinions on topology. Yeah. So a lot of people a lot of people are saying that you should never use something like zero meshing or automatic topology. There are several different software you can do this now, like 3D Coat, ZBrush, and a bunch of different options here. But some people are saying you should never use it, and some people are just saying that you should always use it. Like good <laughs> topology is dead and you never have to use it. Uh, our opinion is that Sometimes you can use it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> essentially, it really that's it. Depends on the task. So if you, I mean, if you were to look at these right now, it's for just from a glance like this, it's impossible to tell where. For if we just look at the heads, which one has better topology, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's no way to find out. Um, but we do have a way to find out. So <laughs> let's. Uh, have let's, a secret little trick. <laughs> <laughs> let's enable our wireframe here. So let's leave the rocks for now hide those actually. Let's focus uh, just on the faces for now. So we have three different faces. One which has been manually retopologized, one which has been Z remeshed, and one which has been decimated. Because I think we want to cover that as well. Yeah. Just it's a it's still topology. It can still be part of the discussion. So if we just take a look at the first one here, regular, normal topology, you've done it by hand. You get to define where your loops go. And if we take something specific as a face, you would have loops for the eyes, for the mouth, anywhere you would really have deformation. Um, you know, you would try to define loops that could, you know, hold your deformation when you get to shapes or something like that. Have that around the eyes as well. So from a glance, if you're some at a distance like this, you would look at the serum meshed one. And you might be inclined to think that I mean, yeah, sure, it has topology. Why? Why doesn't this topology work? You know, yeah. we 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 kind of have a loop. You know, we have a loop that kind of goes around the mouth here. And this is something like if you're in ZBrush, for example, you could see remesh something that follows the topology even closer with something like polygroups, but you still don't have full control over no. it. But that being said, this kind of topology can definitely work for some things. Yes, if you have background characters yeah something so, like so what Morton is saying here is that the middle one here which has in, in big quotation marks here good topology good topology because uh, in quotation marks because what is good topology <laughs> yeah. like it, it if the character on, if the character is going to be super small on screen or if it's not going to deform we don't really care that much at least in terms of like in terms of deformation, that is by far the biggest reason to have yeah. good topology here. If if the character on right here are, is is a statue, like it really doesn't matter a whole lot. Uh, an argument for having good topology is the fact that it becomes a lot easier to UV map something like this. Like if you have good if you have good topology around something like the eyes and the chin, mouth, and all that, UV mapping it does become easier. But now you essentially you have you have the option between spending a few days retopologizing something, and just because you have you get nicer UVs, but you might spend like two hours more UV mapping it. Yeah, just sometimes you just it. you just don't have that that luxury. Yeah. Let's say this here's a rock. It it's, looks a very, like a rock. it's a very nice rock. <laughs> and we have two different rocks. We have a serum mesh rock and we have a decimated rock. I would argue that any of these are fine for rocks. I mean, I probably probably wouldn't even bother C remeshing mm. because if we take the wireframe off here, now these approximately have the same poly count, but this rock retains more detail. Yeah, yeah. You could, like Henning said before, you do you have, there is a strong case for maybe you want to C remesh something first so you can UV it properly. Yeah. Then after it's been C remeshed, you want to decimate it because this is a non-deformable object. This yeah. will literally never move. Yeah. I mean, it might move, but it'll, it won't deform. You know it's going to squash and stretch out rock. Exactly. So yeah, exactly like Morton said here, like UV mapping, the decimated one, is is honestly a bit of a pain in the ass. You can use something like uh, UV Master and ZBrush where you're just painting the weights on it, but that's 
that's not pretty, that's not very precise. And it's a fairly dirty way of doing it. But a perfectly valid way of doing something like this. And this is something we have done, it's a bit hacky in production. But we have done this is you do uh, you do your uh, sear meshing on left, and then you you map it and then you decimate it for final shots here. Mm -hmm. Then you get best of both worlds in that regard. So this is not to diss proper topology. This you definitely need proper topology for a lot of different things. One of them is in production, if you're doing a character, not even like a hero character, like if it's deforming, you yeah. need proper topology. Like if you were to present a decimated version of this, like the one to the <laughs> left here, like that would that would just not fly in any circumstance, unless it's a, maybe a background stature or something. But for a deformable character, that is in no way acceptable. I mean, you could make the argument that the the C remeshed head, for some in some cases, could pass through. Yes. You know, um, if you it's far enough in the background. It doesn't actually have any facial performance. Yeah. Um, maybe you know it had it has limbs and stuff, the torso, everything. When you see remesh things like that, you oftentimes get a perfectly fine result. Yeah. And there's a perfectly fine result at a distance, and that works at a distance as well. Yeah. yeah. But one thing I've seen in production is that you have some people who they they rely a bit too much on on automatic topology. If I was doing yeah. a character for production today, like proper character, not background statue or whatnot, I would I wouldn't see or mesh anything unless it, it like if it had like a if it had a back made of from something like like rocks or something, <laughs> I would decimate. Oh, sorry, I would see or mesh that. Yeah, but. If you're talking a regular organic character, it's a human or it's a troll, a goblin or whatever, I would never see or mesh anything. The thing is the topology might look fine from a distance and it maybe it works in certain areas, but then you have to, if you're gonna stitch together bad sear meshing topology and good topology by hand, that gets incredibly messy. And I find every single time I try to do that, that I just have to delete most of the sear mesh topology and just do it by hand. Doing something like topology for face here, just laying out the basic topology doesn't take that long. We have other videos on that as well. And like you're talking a few hours on doing a head like that. So if this is gonna be used a lot in shots, I would just spend the time, do it properly for that. But really just figure out what the use case is. Like, you know, if it's a rock, like on the screen left here, it's gonna smash a car or something, it's never gonna deform. <laughs> if it's not close to camera, why would you spend the time just because it looks nicer in the rent in the yeah. viewport? Like who cares? Yeah, and even if even if it's a rock that will shatter or something like that, um, you'll have it be triangulated anyway. Yeah. It won't have nice topology regardless. So yeah. For that, it I, I really don't think that matters. I will say, though, that um, I did a character in production once where it had detached plates from from the main body. So the main body being squishy, you know, that was all manual. But all the plating that was on top wasn't connected mm. by tissue or anything. That was pure serum mesh. Yeah. That was, I don't know, 24 plates yeah. that were on the body. And going in and having to manually make topology for that would have taken me days. But with Sea Mesh, I, maybe I did it in a few hours and then it's done. Yeah. I get decent enough um, topology that I can make my cuts for UVs. So for for that example, I think it will work. Yes. So you can definitely also have a mix of topologies. Yes. They're, they're, but it's so dependent on, on, on the product, yeah. right? But one one case where you do want perfect topology is if you are a student and you're making a show reel, <laughs> or if you're making any kind of show reel in general. Yeah. Like you, you don't want to send in something like the one to the right there. Even, let's say you're doing a short film or something like that and you do use sear meshing for it and it looks fine and looks fine in shot there. You're not just displaying the final shots for us when, you, when you're applying. What you're doing, you're, you're displaying a skill set. So if you, if you show that topology to the right here, which I mean, we, we can't use this. And if you have this, I will be very curious as to why it's this bad. Yeah. Like, is there something you don't know, you know? Even though it might look fine, and I mean, if you're doing it for a still image, like let's, it's pure. You're doing illustration or what? Purely a still image. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do manual topology for that. No. Like, there is literally no point. But if you are applying for jobs and all that, you know, make it as nice as you possibly can because you're already at a disadvantage. Like a major key when you when you apply to somewhere as a modeler specifically, mm. you need to show topology. Yeah. Because um, we need to be able to know 
do you know topology? Yeah. And if the case is you show me something that's Siri mesh like this, I would argue mm, probably not. Yeah. yeah exactly. um, for me, when I do personal projects, I almost never do topology no. because I don't. I'm not showing off the topology to people. I'm no. showing off the final product. Yeah. In the end, my projects look like this. That's what my project looks like. I don't have to worry about. Um, it's already been UV'd, right? So maybe I C remeshed it like this, mm -hmm. then I decimated it, but then I don't have to worry about displacement maps, yeah. for, for example. I or, do this a lot as well. But I would highly, highly not recommend you doing that if you're applying for anything. No. Because it does, it does put a few things into question. Yeah, you can do like a bit of like a kind of a little bit of a hacky mix though. Like you can, let's say you're doing a showreel, you could do uh, the high res, which is decimated. And then you have a separate turntable with like your final topology. Point is, you have to show good topology for that. I've I've done that. Yeah, I have also done that. In one of my reels, that was it was like just two turntables. One was topology, yeah. and just swipe over because it was just easier than setting up the displacement map. Yeah, I mean <laughs> displacement maps are fantastic if you are dealing with deformable things. Like in production, we we use displacement maps for everything because we we just need that additional level and. You can't just you can't just send a rigor a six million poly version like no. like the one to the right here. You can get amazing detail for that, like right in the model. But you can't deform it. But if you are doing a still image, you know nobody cares. If it's an illustration, the topology will literally not matter for it. The final the one, what matters there is in in the final result. I think an interesting one is so these. If you take a look at these two, they are, you know. Similar head. Mm -hmm. They come from the same head. And this one is about twice the resolution of this one. Mm. But because this has been manually retopologized, we have decided where do we want to focus our attention on yes. the details? What loops sort of hold our major details? Zero meshed, not so much. Again, you can go in with polygroups and define your loops more specifically. Yeah. But oftentimes, you'll end up with something that twists a little bit. You yeah. will have to readjust it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that we also did for production once was uh, a combination of zero meshing and then having to go in and fix the zero meshing yeah. and uh, I would I would really recommend staying away from that like try that's actually it's such a tricky thing if you get handed something that's been zero meshed mm. and you have to apply some manual topology to that very very hard like to do like merging the two are it, it's such a pain because all of a sudden, it's like you're being you you're handicapped now. Yeah. You have to work with what's already there, and it, it yeah. can be so tricky to incorporate those two. So I, I've I've yet to see anyone who can prove that zero meshing automatic topology is as good as manual one. Like, if you want as good as manual, you have to do it by hand. Mm -hmm. Like, there is no machine learning or any smart <laughs> AI or anything of like that in the current zero meshing algorithm. It looks at curves and like. It looks at the, the shape of the model and determines based on that. Yes, you can add some curves into it, but you will never get final quality. So you you just I've seen people claiming that you can you do full on hero assets using something like C oh, like zero measure and ZBrush. But if you want the perfect if you want perfect quality and you're going to do a lot of blend shapes for it, mm. like it, like it's impossible. You need perfect control of that. Now we now keep in mind we speak from a high end VFX point of view. Like we both working in the film industry in London and we our requirements are pretty insane in terms of topology. But I mean that that is it. Like we, we cannot we cannot use zero meshing for hero topology. No. Like for a face, maybe for an arm or something here and there. But for a face that is one hundred percent out of the question. But it's even even when you're doing something like let's say yeah let's say we do an arm right, then once I get to the hand, I have to do it manually. Yeah. And then you'll have to match up whatever you did on the arm, with the manual stuff you've done on the hand. Yeah. And it's it's just really annoying. Yeah. And like if you if you saw a, a, a other topology videos in uh, you doing this in Maya, if you're doing something like a face here, you're not starting off with the tiny little polys and you're just working your way up from there. You're starting with the big broad shapes. You start by laying down it and then you end up with something like uh, the middle model here which you, which you just subdivide once. Yeah. Like oh, so nice. <laughs> and then you know you steal an ear from a different model you've already mm. done. You make one really good ear and all that. This this kind of stuff doesn't take that long to do. What takes time in terms of designing topology is is really figuring out what topology do you want? Like it's it's getting animation feedback. It's like you maybe you need another loop around his 
his ear or something because there is a wrinkle there or something like that. But topology is a very functional thing. It's there to serve a purpose. Like um, you have, you always have a loop around nasal nasolabial fold around, which goes between um, uh, between uh, the nose and the mouth and all that. Like this kind of stuff. That is because when you deform your mouth in any way, essentially, you get a wrinkle here. If you're smiling, this is a massive fold. You need just a loop going around here. So we're still quite a long way in terms of like performance, like hardware wise and software wise to to completely eliminate topology. Yeah, you know, like this, this is the kind of stuff that would push out on whatever is here. Yeah. And by having it defined in the direction of the how the muscles actually are laid out on the face, yeah. we get much better deformation. Whereas with this, who even knows? Yeah. Yes, again, you can define some direction, but it's you're going to have to play around with it so much. Yeah. And in the end, it is probably just faster to do it manually. Yeah. So, so it, it takes you it takes you like ten seconds to do the one to right here. It takes you maybe like a day to do the middle one. But if you're doing blend shapes with this kind of stuff, or if you you know if you're doing a lot of that kind of stuff, you it will take you ten times as long to do the proper blend shape. <laughs> Let's say you want to do anything which which makes the mouth articulate here. If you want like the lip to curl curl in certain ways or like the corner of the mouth to just deform, you could do that fairly easily on in the middle one, which is done by hand. It would be really hard to get good deformation on on the, the, the one to the right here. Yeah, imagine going in and trying to fix some of this up. Like yeah. then you do your things manually in here. There are yeah. areas that are just super tricky to do that with. Yeah. Once you, you have your, cause because you're already restricted of, of how to connect the topology, it's, yeah. yeah, and you can also see so some of the shapes also don't work properly here, like the ears where, where Morton is currently hovering over. Like you just don't get the shape; just doesn't look very nice here. So, and obviously, like if you if you work in something like games, I mean, then like that's a whole different ballgame mm. here. Then it's like you know you need proper lower spaces and all that. Yeah. But um, and you know you bake from high to low and all that. But we we don't really do that in in film. No, so I think it would be interesting for someone to chime in on that, actually, for yeah. games, because it's not something that we really work in. No. Like, we work with Gavin Golden for some of the tutorial series yeah. that we have. And again, I mean, he's. it seems like he's sworn pretty much by manual read topology yeah. as well for that, um, which I, I guess makes sense. Because especially for games, as far as I understand, where you, you know, how to optimize your topology. Um, and also, that brings us into that whole discussion about triangles. Mm. Um, it's something oh, that the, I the age old discussion. Of it's triangles. something that I really want to focus on or just touch on because I, it's it's something that pisses me off. It's I hate working with people that just uh, they, they've it's so ingrained in them that triangles are like the devil and yeah. you can never touch them because I think triangles really serve a purpose. If if you're doing retopology on whatever a head, an arm, a finger, something like that, there's definitely a place for triangles. There's yeah. always a place for for triangles to be, you know, they, maybe they terminate inside the nose. Yeah, oh, we don't have any terminating. <laughs> Trust me, there should be some some terminating somewhere, and it's. It's it's a really good way to optimize your your topology without having to. Damn, <laughs> there is nothing here. There are no triangles. There are no, here. There are no cavities. <laughs> but I I think once you get to the point where it's do I spend another hour or two trying to reroute all my ver mm. all my edges or do I just terminate an edge in the nose yeah. because no one is ever going to look in here. Yeah, you terminate the edge. What Morton just did there, which which you know he he created, he just created a triangle. That is totally legal. The, the only reason you wouldn't do that is if your software doesn't support triangles somehow. I mean, everything. This is something you may not know, but all there are no really quads in three D. This is all triangles under the hood. Like everything is triangles at render time. It's you know everything goes into mm -hmm. triangles. So. It's fine. No end guns, though. Yeah. Because end guns will actually screw up like crazy. If you bring an end gun to ZBrush, it will convert it to a triangle. <laughs> so you know, no, none of that stuff. But also, don't you know, don't triangle, triangulate all of this. No. Like if you, you know, stick to quads. Yeah. Quads are nice. But you know, <laughs> with this model here as well, you would, she would most likely have hair on it. If mm. you have a triangle under her hair, yeah, exactly. and somebody tells you to spend an hour fixing that, you go, uh, no. You tell them, watch this uh, Flip Normals video. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. They tell me I can do it, and they're like, oh, you're fired. Oh, <laughs> damn. Uh, <laughs> I think an interesting one, we had a, oh, man, we had a teacher once. And uh, we're looking at faces, and he was trying to convince us that, like, be, keep in mind that when, when Henning and I went to school, We'd already done 3D for, I don't know, three, four years. Yeah, four or five like years, something like that. And 
we had this teacher who's trying to convince us that you could do an entire face without a directional change. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this would be a directional change. Yeah, it's right? a pole. Or it's a, a star pole where you know your loops are going up, but they're also going the other way. So this is like it's a. Uh, it's okay. a directional change. Yeah, it's a cross section there, right? Yeah. Tuk, tuk. Um, so he was trying to convince us that you could totally do an entire face without ever changing direction. Now, that is obviously stupid, and he didn't know what he was talking about. This face, however, like, you know, you're pretty close to being there with yeah. some parts of it. Some parts you're like, oh, yeah, you could totally do it. Like, all of this section here, no directional yeah. changes. But then you get down to here, just logically. How would, yeah. you, how would you do that? Yeah. It's... So, yeah. so this brings us essentially to the topic of stars. <laughs> so like stars is something that you, you, you just need to have in your model. So like uh, the model in, in the middle here, um, there, are some, there are some areas here which have uh, like suboptimal star placement here. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, is a fairly old, this is a fairly old model, yeah. which we don't know who did it. Maybe it was Morton. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> maybe it was me a long so, time ago. <laughs> so it, it, looking at the stars there, like around, around the mouth here, this is not something we would do today. We would keep this way, like way cleaner, mm. and we would place the star most likely like just below the nostril, because you know you need stars. Like There is no way to get rid of them. But place them where like you will get hit regardless here. Just place them where they're not going to cause any massive issues. So just keep that in mind when doing doing manual topology. Yeah, it's like it's always good to have have your pole placement sort of outside or just on the border of where you'll have deformation. Yeah. Just because things deform nicer when they're perfectly directional yeah, like this. Exactly. And that's also an argument for doing topology by hand in the way that you, if you if you're doing if you're doing this with zero meshing, you you really can't control where your stars There's are. There's no way for you to define no. which vertex on the face, which placement will have the directional change. You might get close, yeah. but you might also end up with directional changes where I have them. Yeah, no good. So I mean, if you if you listen to this video, or watch this video from the future, <laughs> like the land of uh, 2020, whatever, then th then this might not be an issue. But currently, this is this is still, still very much an issue. Our tools are. The, pretty much the most advanced tool today for, for automatic topology is zero meshing in ZBrush. And the current version is for, uh, ZBrush 4 R8. And it's good, but it can in no way replace manual topology where manual topology is needed. So thank you so much for tuning in to this uh, topology discussion, yeah. I suppose. Um, and if you want more content like this in the future, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic as well in the comments. This is not a black and white issue. No, no, definitely. So we can definitely, we can def definitely get a good discussion going in the comments. So thank you very much for watching.